Well, hello there and welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. We're continuing our quick summer series of easy ideas, not heavy things on the podcast. So welcome. I'm your host, Wendy Batten. I'm so happy, really happy that you're here. And today we're going to talk about taming all of those ideas, the crazy ideas that maybe if you're taking a little downtime or a moment this summer, or you're thinking about things or you're just out for a walk maybe and we have all those crazy not crazy ideas but all of the ideas good bad and ugly <laughs> that kind of come to us and they're wonderful and what do we do with them all we can't action and we can't keep pivoting and shifting and doing all these different things so today i'm going to walk you through my process and how i tame all of those ideas, what I do with my ideas and what works for many of the retailers. So I'm going to give you my three steps and how I work through it. And it really does make a big difference. So I hope it helps you. But before we jump into today's podcast, I want to remind you, some of you know about this because you've been taking action on this, but I want to remind you that my course, Retail Made Simple, which is I call it a success path for creative shop owners because it is the signature course to help you deep dive. And if you didn't go to business school, get sort of all of those pieces that you might be missing. And this is a wonderful time to dive in. It's four modules. It's now available on demand. And so many of you have been jumping in and taking the course and I'm getting so much feedback And I'm so I'm excited. It makes me it lights me up. You guys know I live, breathe and (laughs) have passion for uh, making making you see progress, not making you see progress, making you see what's possible for us as individual independent retail owners. So the Retail Made Simple is available over on my website at wendybatten.com slash RMS Retail Made Simple. See how simple we're keeping it? And it's one of those things you can do on your own, broken down, bite-sized pieces. We cover how to be the boss and how to really step into that role of CEO. We talk about the money side of things. I break things down easy so you'll know what levers you need to push no matter what stage you are in with your business. We talk about marketing. We talk a lot about marketing. There's a module on marketing and sales, getting comfortable and confident in our sales. And of course, we also cover planning and organizing, which kind of leads into what we're talking about today on the podcast. So I hope if you're interested, if you want to get a little more comfortable, confidence, you want to see what's possible for your business, go check it out. It's Retail Made Simple. It's over on my website at wendybatten.com. We used to only have this available for a couple of times a year, but I've been listening to you and all of my listeners and you want access to it when you want access to it. So it's a wonderful thing to work through maybe while you're taking a little bit of downtime or while it's a little bit quieter, if that's the case in your shop right now. Let's level up. Let's help you. Let me help you with this course, this bite size, easy from me to you. Not fancy. (laughs) It's just me uh, teaching a little bit of, you know, how to how to reframe and how to rethink and all the structure. There's a workbook that goes with it. And we have updated it. For those of you who have taken it in the past, you get to take it. You get to keep it forever. So you can take the updated version if you already purchased it. It's already yours. So there you go. Anyhow, let's jump into today's podcast. I'm really excited to help you tame all of those ideas and share with you my process. So let's jump in. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple, proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, we're entrepreneurs, we're creatives, we're naturally idea machines. Like it just, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ship in general is, you know, coming from a place of being an idea driven, right? So it's a wonderful thing to have lots of ideas. But sometimes, it, again, it's a blessing and a curse. It's a great thing. And then it's a horrible thing. I personally, 
have a tendency to be thinking about different revenue streams and business ventures and, you know, um, marketing, new different marketing ways. Oh, we should try this. Maybe it's new um, things that we want to carry in our shop. Maybe it's new signage and new logos, new branding. Oh my, like there's so many things, right? Maybe we want to merchandise. We have a tendency to want to always like change our merchandising, like maybe not all, um, not always when we should. We also, you know, sometimes we also have these wonderful ideas because they're exciting and fun. And the other stuff that we're supposed to be doing is not always exciting and fun. Like I should be working on my whatever, my my financials, or I should be doing some of the hard skills, you know, maybe creating standard operating procedures and SOPs. But instead, I'm like, ooh, this is a shiny, fun new thing, which would be shiny and fun. So I want to do it. How do you tame and how do you know what ideas to move forward on? And how do you tame yourself? I always call it taming myself. How do I like reel that in and just do the things that matter with those great ideas mixed in. Sometimes it is a really good idea to be doing that. So that's the the joy and the curse part of it. It's like there's lots of wonderful things we we can be doing and we should be doing and you know we want to do and it's fun and exciting and it keeps business fun because y'all we know right there's a lot of hard parts (laughs) in business but how do we know when to do what and how do we know you know when to actually let ourselves have that joy and re-merchandise the stores try new marketing things or product lines or whatever versus saying no wendy that's not what you do (laughs) you gotta gotta put a pin in it for a minute and set it aside and we got to work on this other thing right now and we can go back to that so here's what i do and this is just a really quick quick quickie podcast for you today and the first step that i do whenever i have all of these thoughts in my head, all of these ideas. What do I do with them when they're swimming around in my head? I look at my big picture planning. So I put things through a funnel. (laughs) You may have heard me talk about this. If you're a client of mine, we've talked about the funnel. I call it my funnel through my brain, I guess. But I love to funnel through the ideas. So my first question is, in my big picture goals or my big picture planning, does this make sense? Is this like, is this a good idea? Does it fit into what we have planned? And ideally, you know, I talk a lot about 90 day planning and also, you know, our mid-year review, it's a good time to do your mid-year review or your, you know, whenever you're listening to this podcast, but if you're listening to it in the summer, we've just, you know, we're, we've just done a mid-year review. Um, it's a good time for that, right? It's a good time to look at it and say, oh, does this fit in with our mid-year review and our goals for the year? Because we do make changes and we do shift and, and things do move and sometimes we have wonderful ideas during the year that don't that weren't there right that's that's the beauty of running our business but does this make sense in this period of time right now or is this just another thing that I'm adding to my plate so do I have the bandwidth do I have the bandwidth for this thing this idea whatever this may be whether it's a new marketing or a new product or moving the shop around whatever that thing might be do I have the bandwidth for this is this something this is part of the funnel Does it make sense for my big picture planning? Sometimes it's a real easy, like, yes, this is a really good idea. This is a wonderful idea I have in my head, Wendy. This is really great. It's going to work really well for, you know, for your customers. And let's, let's figure it out. Do we have the bandwidth? Well, that's going to take us weeks and weeks and weeks to set up, or it's going to take us a whole week to re-merchandise or whatever that thing is. You know what? We don't have the bandwidth for that. So it's got to be a no. And, and does it really fit into my revenue plan? And really, ultimately, that's what we have to do. Um, if we say yes to one thing, we have to say no to something else. This was a big thing for me. This is something I don't like saying to myself, <laughs> just between you and me. You know, if I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? So if I say yes to this, this means I can't do these other things. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's like, yeah, this is a better thing. This is a better fit. This is a better project. This is a better whatever, a better use of my time, better use of my resources, time and money, whatever. 
Or it's like, no, this is just another thing. You know, it's just another thing. And I don't know where am I going to fit it in? And if I say yes to this, am I cutting into my time? And so all of those things considered, that's the first step when I have an idea, (laughs) when I have a thought, when I have a wild hair and something that I want to do. And I want to urge you to put yourself, put everything through the funnel. The second thing, and I love this, this is my new thing, guys. This is my new favorite thing. The second thing is, I really want to do this thing. I really want to, whatever it is, right? I really want to do this thing. I just like, I just want to make it happen. (laughs) I want to fit it into my, I want to have the bandwidth for it. I want it to happen, but it's not a revenue generating thing. And it doesn't fit into my 90 day planning or the goals that we've set for the business at this time. And it doesn't, you know, and it's, but it's something I really want. It's more, I like to call them like a a nice to have. It's something that would be really awesome for me personally. I like to make these projects like my passion projects. So I, again, I call them like a fringe thing. So this is my like, okay, it went through the funnel and it's not in my plan and it's not in my thing. So what am I going to have to say? Uh, if I say yes to that, what do I have to say no to, right? So I've kind of gone through that and I'm like, oof, but I really want this. And again, I call this a passion project or a fringe project. So it could be, you know, that building that new counter or you really want to paint the whole studio or it you really want to bring in, uh, you want to try a new revenue line or you want to try a new project or something and you really want to make it happen. But dang, it's going to like not fit into all of this other 90 day planning or your goals. So here's the, here's the trick with this one. (laughs) This is my new favorite thing, guys. I learned this from my coach, one of my coaches, April Strink, and she's been on the podcast here before. And she actually shared this from, um, I believe it's uh, Dr. Megan Walker, who has a podcast called Impact. I have not heard it through Megan Walker, but this is, (laughs) this is, kind of down the line, I guess. So April shared this with us. So I was on a recent retreat with April and she shared this and I was like, oh, I love this and I hate it, but I love it. It's a great filter. So the, the passion project, the fin- fringe project, she calls it the 5 a.m. project. Is it something you'd be willing to get up at 5 a.m. for? Like, are you willing to give up your sleep? Again, if you say yes to something, you have to say no to something else. So what are you giving up or what are you willing to do to do this project? which I love, right? So, you know, this does mean kind of like that next filter of, yeah, it's not really a 5 a.m. I call it the 5 a.m. project. I mean, I am an early morning riser, but, you know, is it something I really want to dedicate losing sleep for, like getting up to do or whatever your 5 a.m. thing might be? So you have to remember if we say yes to something, we're saying no to something else, right? We realize that on on the first funnel part. So, is this passion project or a thing that you want to do worth it, the fringe project? And again, I like to say these are um, not needed, but wanted. Usually these are not revenue generating things. Like it really isn't going to make you a lot of money if you just, it, it's a nice to have to repaint my, sh- you know, repaint my back wall, but I don't really need to, right? In my studio. I mean, I don't really need to. Um, there are times that we really do need to paint our back walls. But anyway, I just want you to think about it that way. So we've gone through the funnel. Now we've second, the second thing that we've done with this idea that we have, this wild hair, this great idea that we have, does it pass the 5 a.m. test? Is it a 5 a.m. project? Is it a passion project? Maybe yes, maybe no. So that's kind of the second thing. And the third thing, the third way I go through my ideas when I have all these great, wonderful things I want to do, and they didn't kind of fit into the funnel. They didn't kind of, they're not revenue generating. They're nice to have. They're things I really want. They're wonderful ideas. I mean, come on, guys. We have great ideas. I know you do. Or things that you want to do in the future. Maybe it's a marketing initiative. Maybe it's like this really great event you want to do, but man, it just doesn't make sense right now. Or I, you you know what I mean? All those ideas that we have, you know, it's something wonderful. We're going to start a YouTube channel. I don't know what it is for you or whatever you want to do, but didn't fit into the funnel. It's not worth, it's not, you know, it's just not, we can't give that 5 a.m. project <laughs> to that right now. That's just, yeah, that's a no or a hard no or whatever right now, but it's still a really good thing. It's still something I want to hang on to. So I, ca- I have what I call an ideal parking lot. 
Um, my everybody's smiling right now if they that if they've been with me for a while. If you've coached with me, you've you know I've told you to, to park that thing in the idea parking lot. It's a thing. <laughs> It's a really good thing, to be honest. So I have two idea parking lots. One is actually digital. I have a notepad on my phone and it's literally called idea parking lot. And so when that wonderful idea comes or that great merchandising idea or that great idea for a podcast or something that comes to my brain that I just, you know, I can't action right now, I have an idea parking lot. So I have some short-term parking and I have long-term parking. You know, kind of like play on words for parking. But my short-term parking is, ooh, this is something I need to remember and I want to remember. And that kind of goes into that digital um, idea parking lot right away. The second thing is, the the long-term parking is, oh, this is something I really want to follow up with or do or think about later. Sometimes it's products. Sometimes it's things I can do, you know, with my clients. Like, you know, it's like, oh, this would be a great program, but I can't. I can't have 15 coaching programs. (laughs) Like I can't have 10 courses going, you know, I can't say it didn't fit into my bandwidth or it didn't fit into what my customers need right now, but they might in the future, you know, that kind of thing. What is your, you know, put it in the ideal parking lot. So the other one I have, again, a digital one. I also have actual physical. I'm a, y'all know, I've shared this before. I am a writer. I love to have notes and paper and <laughs> all of the things. So I have a file folder, like an actual paper file folder at my desk. And it's literally called Idea Parking Lot. If you ever come to my office, I will show you my Idea Parking Lot is full of things. It's full of wonderful things. I have clients who have a notebook. They use their notebook. I have a client who carries her notebook with her in her purse all the time. It's in her bag all the time wherever you want to keep it. So I have a digital and a paper one so that I have it when I need it. And I sometimes like I've gone gone back many times to my idea parking lot. Sometimes it might just be next quarter. I go back and I'm like, okay, here's, you know, here's some events I wanted to do. Did that a lot with the studio or here's some great ideas for workshops. Oh, I want to do all these workshops. I want to do all these things. It just doesn't fit into my plan right now. It didn't go through the funnel. It's not going to, it's just the bandwidth isn't there or the opportunity. It's not in our plan. And it's also not, um, it's just not not going to happen. So I hope that makes sense. So I have three ways of doing things, putting it through the funnel, the funnel of, you know, is this a money-making thing? Does it fit into our actual plans and our goals? And do I have the bandwidth for that? So that's like number one. Another thing on that is going a, a step further, if you are trying to convince yourself you have the bandwidth, and it fits into your plans and it makes sense, uh, put it out there, put it out to your coaches, put it out to your like mastermind or other people, put it out to um, any of the communities. If you're in my inner circle, drop it in the inner circle and just say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And then, you know, some questions might come up from some other people. Put it out to your staff, your team, right? Your team can really help you say, when the heck are we going to do that? Or yeah, we can make that happen. That's amazing. We could, you know, I can take on this project and Susie can take on that project. So I want you to think about it that way. So that's the funnel part. The second part is asking yourself, you know, if, if it's kind of gone through that or if it's not past that test and you still want to do it, is it a passion project? Is this a 5 a.m. project? Heck yes or heck no. Usually that's an easy kind of yes. And then if it's like, oh, it's not, it's not a 5 a.m. project right now, but I still want it. I still think this is an amazing thing. Park it. Park it in your long or short-term parking lot and be okay with that and revisit your parking lot occasionally. Keep it, keep an eye on your parking lot. So I hope you found that helpful. Again, we are idea machines. It's a blessing and a curse. Um, mostly a blessing. I honestly, it's mostly a blessing. Um, uncreative unimaginative people with no ideas probably are not running businesses. I mean, it's hard to be an entrepreneur in this day and age without being, you know, creative and trying new things. And and it's, you know, we have to applaud ourselves and we have to be excited about that, but we also have to stay focused on what what's moving the needle and what's what's making us revenue and, you know, what keeping our brain sane if anything, right? Keeping your brain sane so you're not shifting and pivoting and and we've done enough of that we're done with that we're like okay with that (laughs) we've we've proven our pivotability let's make sure that what we do is keep ourselves at ease if we keep ourselves at ease and by ease i mean put a plan in place put a plan in place and execute that plan and you know we can use creativity in other ways but we don't have to keep 
reinventing the wheel. We don't have to keep coming up with ideas. We don't have to, you know, be all over the place. Let's stay in a lane that's working and then add that creative creative things as we pull them out of our parking lot. We can add them next quarter. We can add them, you know, different times. And when the timing is right, you'll know, you'll say, this is a great idea. I parked in my parking lot and I'm going to work on it Q1. Like, you know, when it's quieter or whatever, like whatever that pe- project is, or I'm going to do that passion project. I have time this summer, so I'm going to do that. It's a really cool thing I'm going to work on. So anyway, I hope you found this super helpful. If I can be of any support to you, you know where to find me. It's wendybatten.com. You can find me at Instagram on at wendybattenbiz. I love chatting in the DMs. Pop over there and let's have a conversation over there. Let's continue the conversation. And also really love to know if this is helpful to you. So do you have a wild crazy brain I love feedback I love knowing how you I'd love to know your tips and your suggestions and how you narrow down your ideas and how you keep how you keep your idea machine tamed so thanks very much my friends we'll see you next week I hope you're really having a wonderful wonderful month talk to you soon Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.